Welcome to the Farms.com Risk Management Marketing School video being sponsored and brought to you by DeKalb Brand Seeds, uh, where they're trying to uh, help uh, farmers across Canada do a better job with that commodity marketing. In this seventh video series, we're going to look at international markets and exports and what impact they can have on grain prices. We're going to look to the past and, and see if we can get some insight into the future. So let's start off with the U.S. The U.S. is the largest uh, uh, corn producer in the globe, uh, both corn and beans. They're, uh, you know, in 2011, they're going to grow about 90 plus million acres of corn. That represents about 35% of global production. You can see from this chart, uh, U.S. is uh, ranked number one. China actually ranked number two. EU 27, number three. Brazil, number four. This is uh, thousands per metric tons, and this is 2010 a year. Um, again, uh, U.S. is so large that it's twice that of China. It's ranked number two. U.S. plants about 77 plus million acres of uh, beans, also number one in the world. Production in the U.S. therefore is very critical to grain prices and eventually your marketing plan. Um, however, one Canada ignore the rest of the world. We got also Brazil is ranked number two in soybean production globally um, at 70 million metric tons. Looks like 2011 is going to be a record. Argentina is ranked number three at 49 million metric tons. Uh, any weather production issues in South America can also play a big role. China comes in number four. Uh, China is the largest wheat producer in the globe. Uh, produces about 110 to 115 million metric tons a year. You can see from this chart the EU27 combined actually bigger than China, but China is the largest wheat producer. India comes in third, United States uh, fourth. Um, and then uh, let's have a quick look at uh, Importers and exporters, who are the largest importers and exports, uh, exporters around the globe? The largest imported corn is Japan. 30% of U.S. corn is exported to Japan every year. South Korea and Mexico are ranked number two, three. U.S. exports um, the most corn around the globe. So you can see from this chart uh, that um, um, uh, U.S. is the largest exporter. Uh, they export about 2 billion bushels a year uh, since 2004. That number really hasn't changed. A uh, big part of that, again, 30% of that goes to uh, uh, Japan. Argentina ranks number two, China number three. Uh, exports get a lot of press and attention, uh, but it's, again, uh, 2 billion bushels still represents a small piece of the pie, only 15% of the total pie in the U.S. at 13 billion bushels. Uh, largest importer and exporter of beans, the largest uh, uh, is the U.S. Uh, exporter, um, uh, followed by Brazil and Argentina. 70% of all U.S. soybeans are exported to guess who? China. And uh, Japan is ranked number two. So you can see from this chart, uh, exports have continued to go up the last four or five years, largely because of China. China is the wild card with 1.3 billion people, 1.1 billion hogs, 50% of global production. The con that, that increased demand, um, uh, for feed and food as incomes rise over time is, is, is going to continue to pose problems. And then the largest import of wheat is Egypt, followed by Japan and Brazil. Here's the U.S., um, also ranked quite high. The largest export of wheat is the U.S., followed by Australia and Japan. So. Um, Geopolitical risks, macroeconomic events, global events, uh, all kind of the, the same. Um, in the beginning of 2010, we had this uh, worry about the falling euro dollar due to the European debt crisis. Uh, so this is one geopolitical risk that the markets had to climb that wall of worry. We've been doing that since the beginning of 10, and we've, we've actually moved higher um, since the beginning of 2010. Um, 11, um, well, sorry, I'll just go back to this one chart here on the euro dollar. So you can see the euro dollar falling here since the beginning of 2010. It's recovered a little bit, and that's actually spurring on the economy exports. It's help, actually helping global recovery. So understanding uh, how this all impacts uh, global economies, local economies, uh, U.S. dollar, that sort of thing can, uh, can have uh, a true meaning to those grain prices. Um, um, Again, that, that falling euro dollar increases fears that a global recovery might be jeopardized, again, increasing that volatility. Uh, since the beginning of this year, we've had some unrest, civil unrest, started in Tunisia, then Egypt, uh, now spread to Libya, and the U.S. is now starting to get involved with some military action because they don't want to spread it to um, Saudi Arabia. Um, the worry is that uh, 
you know, the, it's going to spike oil and that could damage some of that global economic recovery. The U.S. cannot afford oil prices to go to 150 a barrel for an extended period of time. The Saudis represent or control about 30% of all global oil exports. Again, this has created increasing fears that a global economic recovery will slow, thus increasing that volatility once again. We've talked about volatility in past video series. And then again, it's something that this, this um, newest event is almost impossible to predict, but this um, natural disaster in Japan, earthquake, tsunami, nuclear reactor meltdown, uh, again, increased that uh, fear but I think the media is making a, a lot more out of it than, than you would think. It's, it always gets worse before it gets better. It's never as bad as you think. And, um, you know, there's about 130, 140 million people in Japan. And only about 10,000 uh, people have died. Probably more than that have been impacted by the earthquake and tsunami. But still a small piece of that entire puzzle. Um, so the natural reaction is just panic. And then once we calm our nerves down, we seem to get back to some common sense. Uh, and the worry really with the nuclear reactor was, uh, is this another Russian Chernobyl situation unfolding as radio level, radiation levels started to increase? But it uh, looks like uh, it's under control and we're, we're caught, you know, that fear is starting to ease a little bit um, and uh, perhaps that volatility has slowed down. So in summary, uh, exports, international markets, global events, geopolitical, macroeconomic events um, can all have a major impact outside of North American uh, production numbers and can impact both prices and the volatility. Uh, having some understanding of how all these pieces uh, come together um, will help your marketing plan. It creates a lot of short-term uncertainties, unknowns, swings, and volatility, but uh, yeah, understanding um, uh, what impact these factors can have ultimately will determine how successful your marketing plan is. Uh, in our next video series, we're going to look at currencies and their impact on uh, grain prices. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope that I've provided some uh, light and shed some insight on how international markets, global events, exports can uh, um, have on grain prices and uh, hopefully can make you a better uh, grain marketing. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.